G'day, Steve here, Woodworking Masterclass. On a recent video when I made this knob for this music stand and I was over on the drill press um, drilling, there was a couple of comments about a little bit overkill on the drill press I had there and I agree. What it is, that actually was a machinist vice and it's to go on a milling machine. Now I ordered my milling machine, but it took um, six weeks or something rather to arrive. And in the meantime, I bought all the gear that I need so when the machine arrived, I could get straight into it. So I didn't have the milling machine when I bought the vice, which I also bought from Viva. And therefore I put it on the drill press. But now I've got the milling machine, I'll take it off the drill press and I'll show you how I set it up on the milling machine. In the machinery shed. I've got to tell you, this heavy. So I've given it a liberal spray of WD-40, RP-7, um, that's inox, it's Australian brand, and also the bottom of the vise. Now both of these are new items so I'm not really expecting any dramas from them. And I will add, at this point, I'm a woodworker. I bought this machine and another machine, a lathe, which I'll show you in a later video, to do one job only. Um, so I'm not worried too much. For, for me, this is going to be accurate enough. I'm not making internal square widgets for a space shuttle or a Formula One race car. So I'm not going through the whole setup procedure that I've seen other people do on YouTube, etc. This does not have to be precision to the nth hundredth of a millimeter or inch. You'll see what I bought this for and what I'm using it for and it's to do with the making of the harps but it was the only way I could think of to do what I wanted to do. Now, I've got a, a diamond stone here, which is not um, that aggressive. It's reasonably fine. And I'm just gonna go over the entire table to see if I've got any high spots. As I said, I don't anticipate any. Uh, I could be wrong, but it's my understanding that these get thoroughly checked by the retailer before they actually get delivered. In this case, I bought this um, from a company called Heron Forbes, which is an Australian-based company, and they do a lot of uh, metal machining. They've also got woodwork machinery, but in this particular case, I bought metal machinery. That is a, a pan break. They're for the same company, and I bought that for my beehives. Now, what I'm doing here is not really lapping it in. I'm just seeing if there's any high spots or if I'm catching, and I'm not. So that means that's machine nice and flat. This is nice and flat. Again, don't get on to me for this, that, and the other, and it has to be super precise. For my business, it is going to be good enough for what I want. Okay, so that's the bottom of the machine. I think I'll just wipe that clean too. Just wipe anything off the table. I have seen, and I've said this with woodworking, uh, any surface, rub your hand over it. Your hand will tell you if something's not right quicker than any instrument or any other device you can think of. And that's nice and flat. So now I've got to turn this over and put it on the machine. And for that, 
I'm going to get it as central as I can. Just put it on, tilt it up, and push it forward. And in fact, that's almost got a vacuum lock on it. So, that's what I want so far. And I have to swing this around so I can get my sliding T-bolts in there. And I'll see if I can bring this around to center and I'll get it pretty close to center on the table. Um, this is going to stay where it is for the uh, initial purpose of what I want it for. Later on down the track, sure, I might decide I want to do other things, but at the moment, I'm setting this up for one purpose only. So, I'll just make sure that center T-slot is going to be adequate for what I want. It's over center, so that's good enough for what I want. Um, and also, move the x-axis to see how I'm looking. There. The majority of um, work I'm going to be doing is just, well, I don't know what it's called, but I'd call it end milling on this part of the vise and some drilling on this part of the vise. So that's why I'm just making sure this all gets set up. And I'll be using ER32 collets. All right. Now the T-bolts uh, that came with this machine are just a little bit oversized for the T-slots I've got here. With this machine, which is a, an Optimum uh, BF20L, I've got 10 mil T-bolts, which fit in there quite nicely. These are 12 mil T-bolts, and I'm gonna keep them and use them because the surface area here is recessed for a 12 mil, so I want to get that coverage. I have seen people make uh, flat washers or used machining clamps to go over there to give them more of a sturdy anchoring point to the table. But again, for the job I have this for, I might do it later on, but I think it's going to be a bit of overkill. So I'm just going to put one in there. I'll put the other side in shortly and then I've just got to true up this face to the vise and what I'll do that for that is um, I think it's called a DTI which is a dial test indicator and I'll set that up and I'll just make sure this is square to that and then I can tighten the bolt on the other side. This is a dial test indicator and every um, notch there is one hundredth of a millimeter so as you can tell very very sensitive to get this vice i want this to be accurate at the back i've put the two bolts into the t-slots and tighten those up but seeing this has got a swivel table on it i'm just nipping both of these up to hold the swivel and then what I can do is I'll measure it and decide what is parallel along there according to the gauge. And one thing I noticed earlier on is, and I don't know if it's a design fault or it's actually intentional. Here, where you normally have a mark to line up with your degrees, I don't know if this one just didn't have one, but it's blank. It's been machined off, but it's blank. So what I'm going to do is get this part of the vise accurate and then where my 90 degree mark is, I'm going to get a cold chisel and just put an indent there. I'm winding it back to this corner and then I'm winding this out just so I can preload that instrument a little bit, bring it in 
a little bit more so I know I've got a bit of play. Zero it. Now I'm going to move the table along that way and if I'm out it should show us, okay, there. I'm 500th or 100th out of a mil. So it is a fair bit out as far as machinists go but as far as I'm going it's going to be okay I think. I'm just going to have to nip it up just a little bit. So the jaws actually are sloping this way which means I've got to give it a tap on this side. So I can bring this corner out. A rubber mallet, just give it a little, a couple of little taps. I've halved that error, or close enough. So we'll tighten these back up. Just give them a nip. Go back over here. And as you can see, that's really not out compared to what it was. Alright. So what I'll do now... My battery just died, so I had to plug it in. So what I'll do, I'll give you a close-up of that gauge. And I've got it dialed in fairly well now. I know I've been going from this corner across, but going the other way, as you can see that indicator is a couple of fluctuations, but that could be just the vibration in the machine. But that is now square. So what I'm going to do is just nip these bolts up tight. And there we have it. So where I've got the 90 degree mark here on the side, there, I'm just going to get a cold chisel and put a punch in. It's going to be pretty darn close. And I know this is going to push it out a bit. And the mark isn't straight, I've got to tell you, but I know that the point of it is at 90. And the next job I want to do is some milling. And this is brand new to me. I have not been near a milling machine for years, and I think it's over 20 years since I was using a metal. Uh, 40 years since I was using a metal lathe. So, we'll see what we can do. But I'm pretty happy with the way that's looking at the moment. And that is now accurate. At the end of each night, I'll give it a good spray of WD-40 or something or other, just to make sure it doesn't get any surface rust. And... Um, that is that. Well, that was how I set it up. And if you're interested in that vice, check below. There's a link there to Viva and a special price for a limited time if it's something you need to get. Till then, and I look forward to having your company in the workshop for more projects. This is Steve pulling the shell down saying, remember to keep it sharp. But more importantly, keep it safe. Look after yourself. Be kind to each other. And I look forward to having your company in the workshop, at the workbench or a workbench, very, very soon. Till then, God bless. Bye for now.